We're going to examine the wrist today, and the best transducer for this examination is the L25, the small footprint. We'll check that the exam type is correct. We're doing an MSK type of exam. For orientation, there is a marker here, which corresponds to the turquoise dot on the screen. Keep this marker proximal when I'm examining longitudinally and medial when I'm examining transversely. And we'll start the wrist on the dorsal surface and examine transversely first. There are six compartments beginning with the, the first compartment uh, at the base of the thumb and the sixth compartment near the ulnar styloid. When we look at the wrist structures, we're looking not only at tendons and bones, but we're also looking at a multitude of joints. If I um, come over here to a middle portion, we're looking at carpal bones here. Uh, in, with the presence of synovitis, we would have hypoechoic or anechoic fluid and thickening of synovium at these recesses, which are the joints. Uh, none of that is present here. We'll move over to the extensor tendons of the thumb, uh, where you can sometimes see de Quervain's tenosynovitis. And here is a nice view of one of the long uh, tendons of the thumb. These extensor digitorum tendons here are normal in appearance on cross-section. Uh, these are the, are the two thumb tendons that you see right over the distal end of the radius, which is right here. This uh, then can be traced distally out toward the thumb, and these tendons and their peritendinous tissue can be examined carefully. On the other side of the wrist toward the ulna, we have a very nice view of the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon, which is one of the largest extensor tendons in the wrists and easiest to see. It also is frequently surrounded in a patient with an inflammatory process with fluid or synovium, and that can be seen as either anechoic or hypoechoic shadow around the distinct oval-shaped tendon, which is hyperechoic, uh, and you can see the fibrillar nature within it. If we look longitudinally, keeping this dot proximal and find that extensor carpi ulnaris tendon. Uh, you can see these parallel lines which are going from left to right. Uh, there are areas that are hyperechoic alternating with hypoechoic. Uh, this is a normal appearance of the tendon. You can also visualize peritendinous tissue, the retinaculum which is up here. And deep to this, this is the distal part of the ulna first part of carpal bones, and triangular ligament is in here. Uh, next, we look at the volar, or palmar, surface of the wrist. And most of the time, we're going to be looking at the median nerve in this area. Again, the transducer marker is placed medially. This structure here is the median nerve. We can go toward the radial side and see the artery, the hypochoic or anechoic area that has a small pulsation, sometimes checking color Doppler signal or Doppler signal is helpful. And the median nerve then is seen right here in the middle. On the ulnar surface, going in this direction, is the ulnar artery. We can freeze the image and take a measurement of the median nerve if it's desired to see whether this is enlarged. There's a direct correlation between this measurement and the presence of carpal tunnel syndrome. So I have placed my calipers on both sides of the median nerve just inside the perineurium, and then I'm going to hit this ellipse button, and then I can actually take an approximate surface area. She has a 0.08 centimeter squared area, which is normal. And so, by ultrasound criteria, does not have carpal tunnel syndrome. 